वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम शिला त्रिपति आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पोर्ट्स ऑफ ईस्ट कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया अंडर द पेपर इकोनॉमी हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया यू नो दैट वी हैड सेवरल पोर्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया एंड इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल लर्न दैट हाउ द पोर्ट्स ऑफ ईस्ट कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया पर्टिकुलरली इन एंशियंट टाइम्स प्लेड ए मेजर रोल एंड विद द ports we had trade contracts with other con other countries surrounding the i mean uh, co maritime contracts with the ports of adjoining area that is with southeast asia and all those co other countries and uh, these ports provides information as about the trade adjacent cultural contracts with uh, other foreign countries along the east coast of india there were number of ports which uh, i mean came into light in different periods of history and uh, since early historical period uh, there were ports uh, from in uh, west bengal andhra pradesh uh, tamil nadu and odisha coast as we know that the ports of bengal for instance tamralipti chandraketugad पांडुराज देवी सोनार गांव सत गांव ऑल दीज पोर्ट्स वेर एग्जिस्टेड इन द अर्ली हिस्टोरिकल पीरियड एंड दे हैड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स बोथ विथ द इंटरलैंड ट्रेड एज वेल एज द एक्सटर्नल ट्रेड ताम्रलिप्ति वॉज ए द्रोणीमुख टाइप ऑफ पोर्ट विच वॉज लोकेटेड एट द कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ सी एंड द रिवर एंड दिस ताम्रलिप्ति हैज बीन रेफर्ड बाई टॉलमी फायाइन वेंगसांग एंड इट इज mentioned that uh, there were regular sailing of vessels from tamralipti to burma and they were crossing the bay of Bing bengal and they were making a direct voyage to malaysia and other parts of southeast asia even they were going to east indies and beyond the region no as you know that uh, during uh, rule of ashoka ashoka son mahendra uh, and daughter sangamitra has gone to sri lanka with a branch of bodhitri and they had sailed from tamralipti as it is known from the ashokan uh, period documents but uh, before that we should know that tamralipti was a port that's what uh, that's what ashoka sent his son and daughter to sri lanka if tamralipti was came to light uh, during ashokan times i don't think that it was possible for them being it was uh, a, a port before ashoka so that was that's what ashoka has sent to his son and daughter to tamralipti with a branch of bodhitri the archaeological excavations uh, at tamralipti has brought to light uh, terracotta uh, uh, figurines of sunga period as well as copper coins and more importantly the excavations of tamralipti has uh, yielded uh, related ware sprinkers and which shows particularly the sp sprinkles uh, shows that contacts with uh, other countries and uh, the archaeological stratigraphy um, um, uh, from the archaeological excavations we can get some structural remains that is a stepped tank which is second third century ad the other port of tamralipti is known as chandraketugad okay it was also a flourishing port of west bengal uh, during first century to fourth century ad and tamra Chandraketugad was uh, located or situated on the river bank of Vidyadhari and uh, it has a Chandraketugad has a earthen fortification and Ptolemy has referred to the Chandraketugad as Gange the archaeological excavations of Chandraketugad was uh, carried out by uh, asutos museum calcutta and during excavations there they have found nbp graver semi precious stone beads panchmark coins and panchmark coins with boat motifs this is the first instance in india where we have found panchmark coins with boat motifs the other findings from chandraketugad was you no know, pedi storage uh, wooden structures 
those were wooden boxes that is one of the important findings moreover we have found related ware semi precious stone beads and terracotta figurines of sunga kushan and gupta period panchmar coins kushan coins gupta coins also has been uh, found uh, from chandrakirti gad excavations and uh, brick brick temples of later period and uh, the semi precious stone beads as well as uh, uh which were found in chandraketu gor those were resembling with uh, the stone beads of uh, banta pet of thailand okay similarly it appears that uh, probably the beads of chandraketu gor had uh, gone i mean the people of chandraketu gor the mariners of chandraketu gor probably dealing with the semi precious stone beads and they had contacts with uh, thailand okay and the, then similarly there is another important finding is lead ingots has been found in chatragat gad and similar lead ingots has been found from karbi province of thailand the findings of chandraketu gad clearly suggest that that it was a port and as well as urban settlement which was flourishing from uh, 4th century bc to gupta period you can see in the slides the lead ingots as well as the structural remains of chandraketu gad moreover from west bengal we have found lot of lot of brahmi and khorosti inscriptions datable to 1st to 5th century ad from uh, those inscriptions are found on pots seals and ceilings from chandraketu gad tamralipti bangar and other sites and uh, it shows these i mean the decipherment of these inscription shows that there was a contact between ports of west bengal or the these sites of bank west bengal with the northwest region of india and uh, these people were involved in horse trade and corn trade and uh, the horses of north western region people were bringing that is uh, north central asian people were bringing to bengal on the land route and they were crossing mathura and all those places then from bengal these uh, horses and other uh, local products were uh, i mean uh, sent to south asia and other ports of southeast asia the inscriptions what has been found in uh, west bengal that is khorosti and bamme inscriptions similar brahmi inscriptions has been found in uh, orissa that is in manikapatnam and radhanaga and moreover in outside of india that is in thailand vietnam and bali and it shows that the script the language has gone along with uh, these mariners to southeast asia and whereas uh, these are the early historical evidences of horse trade with southeast asia and do uh, uh, kind of ships were used in the chandraketu gad seal uh, the inscription reads as uh, trayapaka that means a family uh, dealing with uh, maritime trade and these trayapaka kind of boats has been referred by periplus so the seal has a legion in khorosti brahmi script uh, uh, referring to three days yatra that means i mean voyage to three countries or it could be also voyage to in different directions so you can look at the screen in the terracotta i mean those uh, terracotta seals and ceilings in the first one in the screen a boat with a small horse so that shows that boat i mean horses were transported on the boat and another one see on a terracotta boat there is a horse figurine and different kind of other boats with brahmi and khorosti inscriptions so it is clearly gives us the information that uh, during early historic period uh, these are the evidences of maritime trade with india i mean southeast south asia and southeast asia and in the again on the screen you can see panchmar coins where there are the depiction of boats 
as i told you that in the post gupta period in bengal there were a number of temples where there is a depiction of boats okay the boats you will find terracotta temples uh, in bishnupur and in uh, radhakantapur and prahladpur in different districts okay so these shows in 67 century ad there were uh, i mean the people of bengal were also i mean uh, involved in maritime trade in addition to maritime trade these boats also depicts uh, naval warfare and uh, other aspects of maritime trade and after bengal now we will see the ports of orissa orissa is also located on the east coast of india as you know very well and like bengal orissa had several ports and uh, Uh, in early historical ports if you will see the uh, ports of borisha were located on the southern uh, side and on the southern orisha and among the ports of uh, uh, this uh, southern orisha manikapatna and pallur were important later period calcutta patna uh, and radha calcutta patna and radhanagar but the important part of uh, radhanagar that uh, the site is uh, located surrounded by the buddhist sites in later period we have the ports of orisha which were located in northern orisha those were baleswar pipili and dhamra but uh, in early historical period periplus has referred to the ports of orisha among others the important is dosaruni probably dhauli similarly ptolemy is also referred number of ports the, that is nanigam katikardam kanagar and uh, dosarun and adams and all those things among the ports referred by ptolemy some it is i mean has been identified and scholars have worked on it but some ports has not been identified where more i mean uh, systematic explorations and excavations are requ i mean required and uh, similarly though ptolemy has mentioned the ports of orissa but interestingly he has not referred the port of chalur uh, paluru chelitaro and manikapatna see manikapatna was a port of early historical period uh, on the bank of chilika similarly the 10th century ad text brahmanda purana mentions chilika as a port and uh, the ships were sailing from chilika to java malaysia silong and there were number of ships the purana refers number of ships and types of ships similarly literary and archaeological sources suggest that in addition to manikapatna and palur there were other ports of orissa called dantapura chelitalo kalingapatna and pithunda pithunda port has been referred in the inscriptions of kharabeda okay and uh, coming to inland ports which were also a uh, important habitational sites see among them is sispalgad the excavations of sispalgad that is very close to bhubaneswar has brought to light i mean in the earlier excavations has brought to light evidences of 3rd century bc to 4th century ad but the recent excavations carried out by deccan college professor ravi mahanti and his colleagues now the date is uh, going back to 5th century to 6th century bc to 4th 5th century ad so sispalo gad is a site which gives i uh, uh, the evidences of 6th century bc to 5th century ad okay and uh, that means the ports and trade centers of orissa are now datable to 5th 6th century bc and uh, uh, the excavations of sispalgad has brought to light related ware knobbed ware uh, as well as uh, your roman cult traps and your clay bulls you know related ware almost uh, india 
in different parts of India, not only on the poor sites, in the hinterland site, in trade centers, this pottery has been found. Similarly, knobbed pottery has been found all over the east coast of India and very limited sites where knobbed ware has been found in the west coast of India. And there is another site, as I was talking to you earlier, that Radhanagar. Radhanagar is a site it is a habitational site and surrounded by lot of Buddhist uh, settlements that is Lalitgiri, Ratnagiri, Langudi and all those sites. And the excavations of Radhanagar um, has yielded again related where this is the general view of Radhanagar where Orison Institute of Maritime Studies has carried out the excavations and during their excavations they have found uh, evidences of early historical period that is they have found they have found related ware, knobbed ware and uh, other pottery as well as molded pottery and uh, pottery having designs. Now the other port site is Manika Patna is located on the bank of Chilika. Okay? As I told you in 10th century references that uh, they have referred uh, Chilika was a port. But uh, Manika Patna on the bank of Chilika, the archaeological excavations has brought to light uh, Khorosti inscriptions you can see on the screen and stone mouldings, different kind of pottery, related ware and uh, terracotta beads, Indonesian uh, uh, images, as in, that images includes bronze and uh, terracotta figurines of uh, Indonesia. More interestingly, what we noticed at Manika Patna, there are a number of terracotta bells. These terracotta bells submerges during high tide and exposes during low tide. That means when the site was in operation, that means when, Khalka, when Manika Patna was a port, the leg was away from the site and these ter terracotta rings were usable. Now, because of uh, geological factors, the site, I mean these terracotta wells are under the waters of uh, Chilika Lake. Okay. So, it shows that how the geological factors or geological factors have played a major role uh, in the declining of maritime trade. Yeah, and Manika Patna excavations has brought to light evidences from early historical period to 13th, 14th century AD because we have found Sri Lankan coins, Chola period coins, Chinese coins as well as Chinese ceramic swords. These Chinese coins and Chinese ceramic, ceramics are of later period and your Chola coins is of 10th, 11th century and as I told you that in Manika Patna we have found related bear and uh, knobbed bear, these are of early historical period. So based on these findings we can say Manika Patna was a port which was continued from early historical to uh, I mean a medieval period. The another important port of Orisha was Calcutta Patna. This is very close to Konark, the, I mean the UNESCO monument, Konark temple. Calcutta Patna is on the bank of river Kusabhadra and another interesting aspect of Calcutta Patna is that only one dynasty, that is Ganga dynasty evidence has been found at Calcutta Patna. Another interesting aspect you can look at Calcutta Patna. See, the remains of the port is on the bank of uh, the river. And during a high tide, the, the river, you know, because of the river activities or river action, these archaeological remains are going into the river and slowly these are disappearing. And there is a major, the, because of the river, we, are, we have noticed that the, uh, uh, the remains of the port is uh, going into the river. This is because of the river erosion. 
and similarly the excavations at calcutta patna which was conducted by archaeological survey of india brought to light chinese coins chinese silladen uh, chinese silladen were eligible as chinese ceramics but during our recent explorations we noticed that the stamped pottery okay as well as uh, uh, ma, ma, mercury jars these mercury jars and stamped pottery belongs to southeast asia in 13th century 14th century these mercury jars were coming to india and these stamped ware similar kind of stamped pottery has been reported from mattupalli and kottapattanam of andhra pradesh and on the on the walls of konark you can see there is a there are images of uh, giraffe along with arab merchants and that shows that uh, calcutta patna during ganga period was a port and the arab traders were coming to calcutta patna so it is evidence of art and sculpture in the maritime trade and now we should see who were the traders and who were involved in this trading coming to orissa east coast of india you will see there will along with the port sites there were a number of buddhist sites here on the screen you can see the buddhist map of india along the uh, bu uh, port sites you will see buddhist settlements also see as i told you Ra radhanagar very close to radhanagar there is a udayagiri lalitagiri ratnagiri and langudi and uh, lalitagiri udayagiri ratnagiri excavations has uh, brought to light evidences from 3rd century bc to 9th century bc eh, sorry 9th century ad okay similarly langudi the monolithic uh, Buddha, uh, stupas which are resembling with your sankaram of visakhapatnam area very close to visakhapatnam there is a buddhist site in andhra coast sankaram there also you will find number of uh, monolithic uh, stupas so langudi also you will find in orissa number of monolithic stupas so probably the people were exchanging their ideas and uh, on the screen also you can notice the osokan uh, inscription dhouli where a buddha ima buddha sorry elephant uh, is emerging from a rock so these were the buddhist evidences which were associated with these buddhist uh, evidences and the buddhist mariners were associated with maritime time trade and more importantly the buddha images of uh, ratnagiri and buddha images of uh, borobudur in indonesia are resembling you can have a look at the screen see the uh, buddha images their curly hair style of ratnagiri is resembling with the borobudur buddha similarly the bhumi uh, sparsha mudra of ratnagiri image is resembling with uh, borobudur uh, buddha image and if we look into the trade routes see there were three trade routes starting from tamralipti to tamil nadu so different season these mariners were taking different different routes and based on their requirement on their uh, demand of cargo they were following these routes and another thing there is a shipwreck in um uh, um uh, belitung shipwreck the archaeological findings of that shipwreck shows they were following the same route which is resembling with our uh, trade routes of ancient india and from the traders of orissa they were going to java sumatra and bali and uh, because of the demand of spices Uh, there were a number of i mean the contact was more cordial between orissa and southeast asia even periplus and indian text mention about uh, uh, sandalwood and clove which were coming from southeast asia and uh, now we will uh, see how the ports of andhra pradesh 
has played a role in the maritime trade of east coast of india uh, similar the ports of andhra pradesh kalingapattanam and your pithunda and narsapur there are a number of ports in uh, andhra pradesh and in different periods of history these ports have played a major role for instance kalingapattanam and your uh, dantapura and your pithunda were the early historical period ports but uh, the other trade centers of andhra coast during early historical period were tattalkonda bhavikonda and bimlipatnam see the early historical period buddhist sites were there buddhist settlements were there it is very interesting to tell you that when you will visit to the tattalkonda and bhavikonda sites you can see those were located on the hillock and the from the hillock you can see the sea okay probably those were served as a, you know something kind of a lighthouse and probably the mariners were uh, following these sites during their navigation and uh, the long coastline of andhra pradesh is having a long maritime history as i told you kalingapattanam it was located on the river of banshadhara and the archaeological excavations of kalingapattanam has brought to light uh, related where red slipped where gupta period terracotta art terracotta figurines and gold coins and there is a stupa which is datable to early historical period and uh, uh, there are settlement sites see now look at the screen there are different kind of pottery during our explorations we had found along with uh, your saddle coin and uh, stone pedestals okay and sprinklers so many things and the other port of andhra pradesh was dantapura that is also located on the bank of river banshadhara and during archaeological excavations of uh, dantapura which was done by department of archaeology of andhra pradesh there they have found nbp related ware knobbed pottery and stupas which were made of i mean brick stupas okay and red slipped jar and uh, uh, these uh, pottery of uh, uh, dantapura shows of uh, earlier to kalingapattanam and between kalingapattanam and uh, dantap uh, kalingapattanam and dantapura the another important site is it sali undam on the hillock of the sali undam you can see number of buddhist uh, stupas brick stupas and monasteries and uh, viharas and during excavations their panchmar coins puri kushana coins roman coins has been found and uh, on the pot sets they have found brahmi uh, inscriptions and uh, am among other pottery related ware and red red polished ware also found and uh, two inscriptions were found in uh, uh, this uh, an account cell which has written that uh, shila patak that means which probably the ancient name of uh, sali undam and the findings of sali undam are resembling with the findings of arika medu nagarjuna konda and sispalgarh even to some extent of uh, hastinapur and some of the images of sali undam is resembling with gandhara features now see when we came to know from these archaeological uh, findings as well as the port sites how buddhism has played a role in the maritime trade of orissa similarly we are having the evidences of uh, buddhism which had played a major role in the maritime trade of andhra pradesh here we cannot distinguish maritime trade of andhra pradesh or odisha or tamil nadu see they there were ports and buddhism has played a major role in all these places okay so wherever there is a port there is a buddhist settlement M most frequently we have noticed you can see on the screen the buddhist stupas of dantapura and again the brick stupa uh, at kalingapattanam and your bhavikonda tatlakonda salihundam and as i was telling 
telling you that uh, the Sankaram site, monolithic stupas, here you can see at the uh, screen the Sankaram stupas, even the Buddhist images, there are some caves. And very close to Sale, Sankaram, there is a place called Kottur. Probably it has been referred by Ptolemy, and there are Buddhist stupas as well as uh, Buddhist caves. And the other important ports of uh, Andhra Pradesh were Dharani Kota on the bank of River Krishna. And interestingly, Dharani Kota is, you know, that uh, um, uh, away from quite away from the seashore, around 34 kilometers probably away from the seashore. Uh, from the seashore and the there is the excavations has brought to light and uh, uh, I, uh, in the inlet of the river Krishna where ships were plying and the, the uh, a wooden wharf has been found which is made of uh, wood okay wooden wharf and uh, the excavations of Dharanikota has brought to light uh, in Northern Black Police Depository, Aritine Ware, Roulette Ware, some Emperor pot sets and uh, pot sets with Brahmi inscriptions. As I was telling you that uh, the navigation channel of uh, River Krishna is uh, 5 meters depth and there 20 to 25 meter width uh, channel is there which was connecting to river Krishna and the excavations in addition to all those things we have found uh, knobbed pottery and northern black polished pottery and you can see on the screen and uh, you see again on the screen you see the post holes of the wharf of Dharanikota and the rocket channel and the occupational remains of Dharanikota. And the other port of uh, Andhra Pradesh was Kottapatnam and Ptolemy has referred as Kotis and this port was also equally important like Dharanikota and other places, other ports of Andhra Pradesh. And, uh, um, uh, the exploration is brought to, brought to light uh, related bear, Roman glass pieces, stamped pottery, porcelain ja, uh, po Chinese ceramics and Chin Chinese cylinder uh, ware and uh, Ch uh, Chinese coins. See, Kotapatnam was a port from early historical period up to Vijayanagaram period because Vijayanagaram coins has been found and on the screen you can see related pottery and other kind of pottery found uh, at Kottapatnam and Chinese coin. Most importantly, recently during our exploration, we have found a stone anchor which is the first stone anchor so far has been reported or found in Andhra Pradesh. So, and uh, the other port is also Motupalli, which was a port because according to the archaeological uh, evidences as well as the inscriptional evidences, Motupalli was a medieval port. But recent explorations has uh, brought to light related pottery and stamped bear, which is datable to 2nd century BC. And, uh, these archaeological, recent archaeological studies of Motupalli has uh, uh, provided information on the maritime contacts of Motupalli with Southeast Asia and China. You can see on the screen the Motupalli pillar inscription and different kind of portraits and habitational remains that is a terracotta ring bell and the excavations carried out by Department of Archaeology of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, so, it, it so uh, from these findings, it shows clearly that uh, Motupalli has played an important role in the maritime history of Andhra Pradesh. Coming to the ports of Tamil Nadu, uh, again, uh, Mahabalipuram, Arika Medu, Pumpuha, Trenkabar, and all other ports of Tamil Nadu has played a major role. Among other, among other ports of uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Arika Medu is a very important port. We are having the evidences of direct Roman contact and Arika Medu was a, uh, there was a Roman settlement and uh, uh, Arika Medu excavations has uh, played a key
key role to study the Roman contacts of India with the uh, Red Sea coast. During our recent explorations at Arika Medu, we have found a number of related bear, micro beads, uh, semi precious stone beads, micro beads, and uh, we have found a Ganesh image. And uh, when I, uh, these images, because uh, one more image was found during Villers' excavation, uh, which has been kept in the Pondicherry Museum, but uh, Similar kind of Ganesh images has been found in Southeast Asia, particularly in uh, uh, Jambi area of uh, Indonesia. And more, more in addition to these findings, we have found brick structures on the bank of uh, river Aranya Kupam. And earlier, uh, during Villers excavation, the antiquity of Arika Medu was datable to 1st century AD. But the excavations carried out by Bimala Begle and others, it clearly suggests that Arika Medu was a port uh, during 3rd century BC to later period. Coming back to other port that is Pumpuhar, it was also a Sangam period port. The Department Archaeological Scholar Sarva of India has excavated where uh, Buddhist uh, establishments has been found at uh, Palamanasparam and other sites. In addition to uh, these Buddhist establishments, we, the excavations has brought to light uh, uh, brick warps. Along with in those warps, uh, there were uh, uh, wooden uh, uh, remains were there. Based on those archaeological findings, because Pumpuhar has been very, I mean, in detailed way mentioned in the Sangam text, which are datable to 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD. So, based on these def uh, evidences, the Department of Archaeology Government of Tamil Nadu funded. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, given a project to NIO, that CSR NIO Goa, to undertake explorations. And during our explorations, we have also found number of structures along the bank, along the, uh, along the coastal uh, Pumbuhar, where we found uh, terracotta ring bells and uh, with, uh, brick structures. And some of the structures were, I mean, uh, submerging during high tide. And those structures you can see on the screen, which during low tide, it, uh, those have exposed. And uh, coming to another important port is Mani, uh, Mahabalipuram, which was a Pallava period port and flourished during 17th century AD. And the Tamil text Kadal Malai mentions that ships bringing precious goods and coming to uh, Mahabalipuram. And uh, to beautify the port city, that is Mahabalipuram, which was the capital of uh, probably of the Pallava dynasties, they had constructed a number of temples. And uh, even one of the temples of Mahabalipuram had served as a lighthouse. And uh, during our uh, Mahabalipuram lost its importance and the port itself lost its, lost its importance because when the Cholas came to power in uh, Tanjore and other area. And you can see that uh, in Mahabalipuram on the screen, you can see that during our explorations, we have found some stone structures in underwater of Mahabalipuram but a lot of work is required to confirm whether these are the, uh, I mean, uh, remains of the temple or not. It is very early to tell whether these are belonging to uh, temples. Okay, but we have to work uh, a number of uh, uh, analysis we have to do, a number of uh, studies we have to carry out. Coming to the, again, Mahabalipuram, in the screen you can see that uh, early period lighthouse and uh, a te second century text of Tamil Nadu mentions that there was a brick uh, tower and which was guiding the ships. Okay, and when the and recently the modern lighthouse, uh, lighthouse has come very close to that temple of Mahavalipuram. And uh, there is another site 
port site of uh, Tamil Nadu was Alagan Kulam. It was also equally important like our uh, Arika Medu and Mahabalipuram. And this port, this was a Roman uh, port datable to 3rd, 4th century AD. And Roman ships were coming with uh, wine and for us and other goods. And the excavations of uh, 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 Alangan Kulam has brought to light amphorae and your uh, um, uh, roulette bear, aritain bear. And uh, it, you know that uh, uh, the Alangan Al Al Kulam site is away from the sea and the river Baigai, the ships were going around uh, quite a distance from the seashore. So that means th there the river navigation system was there. And even Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka was easily accessible or reachable from uh, Alagan Kulam. And uh, again, here, as I told in my earlier, uh, um, um, uh, earlier, I mean previously I told you that Buddhism has played a major role uh, in the maritime trade. Here we are also having evidences of uh, Buddhism in Tamil Nadu. But interestingly, one thing I will tell you here that in Tamil Nadu, so far we have not found any Buddhist stupas like in Orissa and Andhra Pradesh, okay, but we have found a number of Buddha images, not only in Tamil Nadu, even present day Pondicherry also, okay, and uh, another, I mean, the port of Tamil Nadu was Korkai, it was a Pandian kingdom, and it has been mentioned by Ptolemy as a Kolchi, and it was a pearl fishing harbor, and even, even till today, people of this region, they go for pearl fishing, and, uh, in, and this was a Sangam period port. Because of uh, geological factors, uh, our shoreline changes, now the present uh, Korkai is probably 5 kilometers away from the seashore. Okay, once upon a time, Korkai was on the seashore, now it is 5 kilometers away. The other ports of Tamil Nadu were Kayal and Tondi, and uh, uh, these ports were also played an important role. And uh, overall, if we will see in the summary uh, of this my lecture, I can tell you that the ports of east coast of India played a major role uh, in the, I mean, both in the um, uh, exporting and importing of uh, cargo, as well as uh, contacts with Southeast Asia and Roman countries. And uh, because of uh, various region, change of dynasties, economic condition of the country, as well as uh, shoreline changes or other geological factors, uh, because of these regions, the ports of east coast of India, some of the ports of the east coast of India declined, and but uh, ports declined in the same place. Another port came to limelight. Ports came, but maritime trade didn't decline. But ports declined, maritime trade continued. Thank you very much.